Dear students, today we will discuss on diseases of citrus and its management. Citrus is one of the most important fruit crop of India. It suffers heavily on account of the serious damage caused by pathogen and insect pest. About a dozen of them attack this crop regularly right from nursery stage to the harvest with cognizable damage. But only a few are quite serious of which effective control at appropriate time is a must to ensure the quality and quantity of the produce. Now let us discuss one by one the important diseases. First is virus and virus like diseases. Most important one is the Tristeza. It is caused by a phloem limited 2000 nanometer long filamentous virus. Now let us see the symptoms of the Tristeza. Tristeza virus can cause diverse field symptoms based on citrus cultivars, environmental conditions and virus strain involved. Five different strains of Tristeza virus are known to exist that cause mild seedling yellows, decline on sour orange, stem pitting on grapefruit and stem pitting on sweet orange. Sudden collapse or abrupt wilting that justifies the name quick decline followed by defoliation of sweet orange grapefruits and mandarin. On sour orange, rootstocks are indicative of Tristeza infection. Typically symptoms on Kagzi lime develops vein flaking of leaves, leaf cupping and stem pitting. Now let us see the host range of the disease. Citrus Tristeza virus infected nearly all species cultivars and intergeneric hybrids of citrus and some citrus relatives. The only known non ruticious host is Passiflora. Now coming to the transmission of the disease. Tristeza can be transmitted by grafting, budding, dodder and by aphid vectors. Toxoptera citricidus Toxoptera oriental, Mises persici, and Aphis craxivora are the common aphid vectors, and the most efficient one is Toxoptera citricidus. Next is the detection or identification. Mexican lime or Kagzi lime is the best indicator plant for citrus tristeza virus detection that develops vein clearing, vein darkening, leaf cupping, stem pitting or vein corking symptoms. Seedlings of grapefruits and Madame Venus or para sweet orange pitting strain of CTV can be used for detection of stem. Next important disease is the ring spot. Symptoms of the disease. The field symptoms on mature leaves include loss of pigmentation in the form of distinct rings of 2.1 to 24.2 millimeter in diameter with green tissues in the middle. The number varies from one to several per leaf. The leaf lamina of infected plants exhibits epinasty, chlorotic flex and leaf mottling. Later on, the infected leaves drop prematurely. Severely affected plants show dieback and decline symptom. Now coming to the transmission of the disease. Bud transmission and there is report of pollen transmission of the virus. Now coming to the detection or identification of the disease. Mechanical transmission to Chenopodium quinoa 
which develops well distributed chlorotic lesions within 4 to 8 days. Sweet orange and grapefruits when used as indicator plants so sock and young leaf pattern within 4 to 6 weeks after grafting with positive samples. Cool screen house temperature that is 24 to 27 degree centigrade maximum during daytime or 18 to 21 degree centigrade minimum during night is needed for symptom expression in indicator plants. Now coming to the next important disease Exocortis. Citrus trees are known to be naturally infected by five distinct group of viroids. Among these citrus exocortis viroid is economically the most important viroid disease and present in almost all the citrus growing regions. Now let's see the symptoms of the disease. Field symptom range from mild bark cracking to very severe bark scaling or spitting on trifoliate and rangpur lime rootstock accompanied by various degrees of stunting and mild to moderate decline of the trees. Twigs and branches of CEVD infected trifoliate or rangpur lime may show yellow streak like blotches, especially on younger greenish twigs. Rough lemon is comparatively resistant. However, it may also develop mild bark cracking symptom with apparently no decline symptom. Although many of the commercial citrus cultivars are symptomless carriers, trees may be stunted to some degree on rootstocks normally considered tolerant. Next is the transmission of the disease. Citrus viroids are distributed primarily by the introduction and propagation of infected budwood and subsequently by mechanical transmission through contaminated hedging equipments, tools, knives, etc. Neither CEVD or other citrus viroids are known to be vector transmitted. Now coming to the integrated management of all the viral diseases. First one is the use of virus free certified planting material or bud wood certification. Then sanitation. Use of virus free plants will not be of much use unless the orchards using virus free plants are also free from other sources of infection like the old disease plants and collateral host since the infected plant may act as foci for secondary virus spread. Vector control. For controlling aphids, Sila, millibuck and leaf hopper spray with acephet aderid 1.5 gram per liter or monocrotophos aderid 1.5 ml per liter or dimethoate aderid 2 ml per liter of water. Different biocontrol agents include parasitoids, predators and microbes also can be used. The genera Aphelinus mesidia and mesidiopsis of FLNED, superfamily of Chalcidoidae, are of parasitoids of aphids, and Tamarixia radiata is an effective parasitoid of Citrus Scylla. Similarly, different coccinelloids are useful predators of aphids. Entomopathogenic fungi like Verticillium lacani and Pesulomyces ferinosus etc are being used commercially against T. citricidus aphis gossipi. Cultural practices also can be followed such as 
all pruning and grafting tools should be adequately disinfected with 1 to 2 percent sodium hypochlorite prior to any fruit picking, grafting or cutting of any tree. Cross protection is also can be followed. Cross protection is the phenomena of development of resistance against severe strain of a virus when a particular plant is previously inoculated with mild strain of the same virus. The most extensive use of cross protection has been in the citrus industry. Then we can go for the quarantine regulations. Strict quarantine measures and restricted movement of citrus budwood will limit the spread of viral diseases. Now coming to the bacterial disease. Most important one is the greening. Symptom of the disease. The range and severity of symptoms vary with season, type and extent of infection, age and nutritional status of the trees. Greening infected citrus leaves are generally small, upright and frequently have symptoms with green veins and chlorotic intervenal areas. Leaf mortal is one of the best diagnostic symptoms of greening. In severe cases, leaves becomes almost chlorotic with scattered dark green islands. Infected fruits are small and misshaped. Many fall prematurely, while those that remain on the tree do not color properly, remaining green on the said side, and hence the origin of the name that is greening. Coming to the causal agent, it is now known to be caused by a phloem limited uncultured bacterium with a cell wall of gram negative type. Coming to the detection. Detection or transmission of the greening. Greening disease is transmitted by infected budwoods and in the orchards through citrus scylla. Scylla picks the pathogen in nymphal stage and transmits it when they become adult. Greening can also be spread especially long distance and internationally by transportation and its propagation in nurseries. Now coming to the management of the disease. The control of greening disease involves removal of affected unproductive trees and their replacement by disease free budded plants developed on improved rootstock. Through proper indexing program, greening free parent trees should be selected for budwood. Regulatory measures should be strengthened to limit movement, cell and use of infected budwood or nursery stock. Strict control of nurseries through registered disease free certification scheme is essential to prevent the spread of disease. Since the disease is also spread through vector citrus scylla, suitable insecticides that is monocrotophos, adderate 0.7 ml per liter or quinalphos, adderate 1.0 ml per liter of water should be sprayed to control its spread. Although tetracycline have been reported to suppress greening symptoms when applied as trunk injection. Complete elimination of the pathogen is not possible by this method. Next important bacterial disease is the canker. It is caused by Xanthomonas campestris pathova citri. Now let's see the symptoms of the canker. Canker lesions start as pinpoint spots and attain a diameter of 2 to 10 millimeter. The lesions are initially circular 
but later may develop irregularly often aggregated at the leaf margin or the leaf tips or in a restricted area of the leaf. The characteristic symptom of the disease on leaves is the yellow halo that surrounds lesions. Young lesions are raised or pustular particularly on the lower leaf surface. The pustules later become corky and creative form with a raised margin and a sunken center. Lesions on fruits and stem extend 1 to 3 mm in depth and are superficially similar to those on leaves. Now coming to the management of the disease. Prevention is the only effective means of reducing the canker disease. Reduce wind speeds by planting of wind breaks. Avoid working in infected orchards when the trees are wet from dew or rain. Thorough inspection of nursery and orchards, quarantines and on-site burning of infected prune debris before monsoon. 3 to 4 spray of copper oxychloride at the rate 0.3% in combination with streptocycline 100 ppm at monthly interval just after the onset of monsoon. So this is all about the bacterial diseases. Now coming to the fungal diseases. Most important one is the Phytophthora disease. It is caused by Phytophthora cytophthora, Phytophthora nicotiani, and Phytophthora palmivora. Now let's see the symptoms of the disease. Phytophthora causes foot rot, root rot, crown rot, gamosis, leaf fall, and brown rot disease in well-grown orchards. Foot rot lesions develop as high as 60 cm from the ground level on the trunk and may extend below the soil on crown roots and crown rot. On scraping the dead bark of the lesion, a brown discolored slippery area can be seen. Such active lesions start oozing gum which can be seen on the trunk as brownish black oozing known as gamosis. In severe cases where regeneration of feather root does not cope with the rate of destruction, the affected plants will show starvation, less canopy volume with naked branches, dieback and slow decline symptoms. Now let us see the reasons for severity. Phytophthora nicotiani and Phytophthora palmivora can tolerate temperature up to 35 degrees centigrade and thus are most active in summer that is 28 to 32 degrees centigrade for its activity and ceases its activity with the increase of temperature. Phytophthora remains active throughout the year in nurseries and in irrigated orchards. Heavy and poor drained soil, excessive irrigation, use of susceptible rootstock and prolonged contact of water with tree trunk exacerbate the diseases and build up of inoculums. Now coming to the management of the disease. Use of resistant rootstock such as sore orange and trifoliate orange are highly tolerant. Cultural practices Since the pathogen is soil borne, its complete eradication becomes difficult in field nurseries, but modified cultural practices can keep disease under control such as seeds should be treated with fungicide before sowing, 
introduction of soil and other material infested with the pathogens should not be allowed. Plants should be selected from Phytophthora free certified nurseries and with high budding above 9 inch height. The nursery soil beds should be either solarized in summer months or fumigated with soil fumigants like desomet to eliminate the pathogen in the soil. While planting, care should be taken to keep bud union as high as possible so that irrigation water should not touch the scion. Soil should be kept well drained and flood irrigation and stagnation of water for longer period in the basin should be avoided. Injuries to trunk and root system by farm operation should be avoided. Then chemical control measures like copper fungicides are used as foliar spray, drenching of basins and as trunk paste to control Phytophthora diseases. To spray and drenching of either L80 at the rate 2.5 gram per liter or Ridumil MZ72 at the rate 2.75 gram per liter covering the whole plant canopy and basin of affected plant at 40 days interval after the onset of monsoon is found to be effective. Bordeaux paste should always be applied before onset of monsoon on tree trunk as prophylactic measures. So this is all about the control measure of the fungal disease. Now coming to the conclusions of this topic. Proper maintenance, care and timely application of control measure can extend the productive span of citrus orchards. The virus disease of crop plants, particularly of perennial horticultural plants can be best managed through an integrated approach of using virus free planting material, use of host resistance, sanitation, cultural practices, vector control and regulatory measures.